In a perfect world, we make flawless decisions about colors and typography from the very beginning and scale our designs without making any mistakes. But in the real world, design is an iterative process and inconsistencies are time consuming to stay on top of as we evolve the aesthetics of our sites. This is where styles in Framer come in, allowing us to define presets for colors, text, and more, then apply those presets to elements across our sites. Then where the real magic happens is that we can later redefine those styles to make global changes with flawless consistency throughout our entire site with just a click or two. Let's take a look at how to create, apply, manage, and edit styles in Framer. Before we jump into setting up some styles, let's take a quick look at the different types you can create in Framer. We have link styles, which we talked about in an earlier lesson on links, text styles, which I mentioned in the previous lesson on text and we'll dig into today, color styles, which will be new to you, and CMS styles, which we're gonna save for another course on the Framer CMS. Each is somewhat unique, but fundamentally they have a lot in common. Let's unpack how each one works. I'll start with a quick little recap of link styles, which we talked about a couple lessons back. I'm gonna select this first layer in my nav bar and add a link on the properties panel. I'll just link it to framer.com so that it actually goes somewhere. And when you add a link to a text layer or a range of text specifically, you'll see a property called style here, and we can click to open this modal. And if you haven't created a link style in this project before, one will be created and applied automatically, which is exactly what just happened. Unlike other text, text links are actually required to have a link style applied. From the links modal here, we can create a new style, select an existing style, or edit an existing style. Here, we've just got this one link style that I've created so far. So I'm just gonna edit that one. And instead of using blue for the color, I'll change it to some sort of neutral gray to be more cohesive with our theme here. And then I'll head back and on hover, we'll just go solid black. Then for the current state, I'll go black as well. So if we're currently looking at the page, it'll look pretty much the same as if we're already hovering on it. So now if I'm happy with that link style, I can go back and uh, personally, I would like to rename this because once I have multiple link styles, I wanna be able to tell them apart. So I'm just gonna double click here and I'm going to name this nav link just to keep it straight for myself later. Now, when I select my other two nav items and I add a link to those, again, I'll just link to framer.com. You see, they instantly take on the appearance of that first nav link I did because we only have one link style. So that link style just got applied automatically. But at any time I can go in and edit this link style again, and whatever changes I make here will apply to all of the links that share this link style all in one swoop. And we can also manage our link styles by going to the asset panel, and you'll find all of your styles here in the style section of the asset panel. So here's my nav link. I can click the little overflow menu here where I can find layers that are using the style. I can rename the style. I can duplicate the style or up above. I can click the plus sign to create a new style without even having to have a link selected. I can create a text style without having to grab some text. I can create a link style without having to grab a link. And then we also have block quotes and code, which I didn't mention earlier because they're a lot like text styles, but they're specific to block quote text or code text. And then we also have color styles and CMS styles here. So again, the assets panel is home to all of your styles, and that's the place you'll go most of the time to manage your existing styles. Now let's look at color styles. Even a simple landing page is sure to have enough colors and layers to make global changes a major chore. Even this basic black and white example page already has a bunch of layers and at least four unique color fills. I'm gonna start by creating a color style for our whole background color here, which is applied to the breakpoint, I believe. If I head down here, I can see that I have a fill, that my fill is this color. And if I click to open the color popover, there's a button at the bottom that allows me to create a new style. And when I click new style, I can now give this a name. Now there are a few different ways to approach naming your color styles. I could name this color for what it actually appears to be. I could name it gray, or I could name it light gray or lightest gray. Using subjective terms like that, light, lighter, lightest, I don't really recommend. 
But if you use a number scale, you can help keep track of what is higher contrast and what's lower contrast, which is why sometimes you'll see colors that end with 500 or 1,000 or 50 at the end. That's just a numeric system that helps kind of take the subjectivity out of what's the strongest in contrast versus what's the weakest in contrast. But in this case, I'm going to name this semantically. I'm going to call it surface. And rather than using the contrast scale, I'm going to name this surface zero because it's the base level surface. So with this called surface zero, I'm going to click create. And there I have it. Now I've got a color style called surface zero. I'll do something similar for the cards. I'll select both of these and these are already white, so I don't need to do anything there. Create a new style and name this surface one since these are one level higher. Now for this next one, let's say I want to grab the black that's being used for my text here. I'm going to head down, choose the color of the text, and when I create a new style for this one, I'm instead going to name this content, and I'm going to name it content 100 because it's 100%. I would name this black 100 perhaps, 100% 100 solid black, but again, I might change the color later. It might not always be black. So in this case, I'm more naming it semantically based on what it's used for. It's used for content. So content 100 and I'll click create. Now, I've got a few other layers that seem to share the same color. And if I think they're always going to share the same color, like the background of this button, for example, I can go and apply that same color style. So again, bring up the color picker. And instead of creating a new style, this time I will select the existing one, Content 100. I can do the same for this black card over here. And the color picker stays open for me, which is really nice. I'll do the same for this button. I'll do the same for this button. I guess I would theoretically do the same for this text here and this text here because those both appear to be black as well as the footer down here. So let me do that text first, content 100, and the footer I'll grab and I'll set that to content 100 as well. And if you decide that you don't want an element to be connected to a color style anymore, perhaps you want to change it and not change everything else or change everything else and not change it. There are a couple of different ways to detach. One is just to remove the color fill and reestablish a color fill, or you can open the color picker and any change you make up here will instantly detach from the color style. You'll notice when I click content 100, content 100 is highlighted. It appears to be selected. But as soon as I make a change up here, it's no longer highlighted. I've deviated from the color style down here, and instead I've manually chosen a color up here. Now let's look at how to edit and manage our existing color styles. I'm going to jump ahead to another version of this document where I've already created some additional color styles and applied them to the corresponding layers. Let's start with the real magic editing the color associated with a color style. So I'm going to head over here to the assets panel. I'm going to find my color styles and I'm going to mouse over content 100. And when I click it, since I'm on the assets panel, it's not going to apply it to anything. It's instead going to open up the properties of that style. And here, all I need to do is make a change and I'm redefining the color associated with that style. So my changes are applying on the canvas automatically in real time. And when I'm done, I can just close this. Then back over here on the assets panel, if I decide that I want things to be a little more organized, which will inevitably happen down the road when we have more and more of these color styles accumulating, we can come up to the color folder, click the ellipsis, and we can create a new folder for ourselves. You can also sort things alphabetically, which can help manage the chaos. But I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to name this folder content, and then I can drag in all of my content-related styles. Another way to go about this is when you're creating or editing the name of a style, you can also type a word and then a slash to create a folder. So boom, I just created a surface folder and I could have done that when I originally named the color style as well. And then I'll drop surface one in there so things are nice and tidy. And if at any point you decide you don't need a color style anymore and you want to delete it and detach it from all of the layers and properties that it's connected to, you can also click the ellipsis icon next to the name of the style and you can choose delete. That does it for part one. Now you know what styles are all about and how to create, edit, and manage link and color styles. Now we're on to part two where we'll dive into text styles. I'll see you there.